Okay, so now we're going to go to question number nine. And I want to preface this question by letting you know that for most of us here, the best way to answer it is to use our concision uh, technique, right? That's where we find the answer with the least amount of words or the least amount of punctuation. And we would subvocalize that. Find the one that sounds the most appropriate and then pick that answer, and 80% of the time, that will get us there. So for most of us, this is gonna be how we want to answer this question. But if you're looking for a perfect score or a near perfect score, then you can hang on, and I will go into some more advanced topics that most of us don't really need to know for this test. Okay, so with that said, let's begin. I'm going to start by reading uh, it as is, then releasing that water into its mouth develops only after months, as if witnessing other elephants doing so. So answer choice A is neither the most concise, and when I subvocalized it, it didn't make any sense. So it's neither concise, nor did the subvocalization make it sound smooth. It was jarring. So I know A is out for both of those reasons, and uh, I'm left with B, C, and D. So the best bet would be to subvocalize each of them because they both are equally, because all three of them are equally concise. So why don't you take a minute and try that on your own? Okay, so let's try B. So into its mouth develops only after months when witnessing other elephants doing so. Water into its mouth develops only after months of witnessing other elephants doing so, or water into its mouth develops only after months, then witness other elephants doing so. So if it's not obvious to you what the answer is, then you're going to want to start with the one that you think is the most jarring and get rid of that one, which should be D. Then witness other elephants doing so. That's even hard to say, and we're not really sure what they mean by that. So D would be out, and we would be left with B and C. Now, when you subvocalize them, for most of us, B and C both sound pretty good, but hopefully you recognize that C sounds just a little bit better, and you would have picked C. So remember, this works 80% of the time. Sometimes it's a little difficult to tell, but I think for most of us here, uh, if you read this, C could sound better than B, so you would pick C. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is go through some more advanced reasoning why C is correct and the others are not. And in order to do that, I need to talk about something we haven't spoken about, and that is what a subordinating conjunction is versus a preposition. So a subordinating conjunction so it's a subordinating conjunction. I'll write it down here. You don't need to write this down, uh, but uh, just so you can see what it looks like. And that would be verse a preposition. Okay. So first let's get these two ideas out of the way. A subordinating conjunction usually starts a dependent clause. So this starts a dependent clause, which I will just write here as DC like I normally do. And a dependent clause is an incomplete thought, right? It's still a thought, right? It still has a subject, right? It still has a subject plus a verb, but it's not a standalone sentence. So a subordinating conjunction is a word that signals to us that we're starting a dependent clause. And we have a couple of words or phrases uh, in some of the answer choices in nine that indicate we would be starting a dependent clause. And so A, answer choice A has as if, right? As if. This is a subordinating conjunction. And B has when. This is also a subordinating conjunction. So they're signaling I'm starting a, a dependent clause. And remember, a dependent clause is an incomplete thought, but it's still a thought, right? So I would be saying I'm starting a new thought. Now the preposition, on the other hand, this is more of a modifier, right? We're modifying. So I'll just say modify. Another way to think about it is it, it illustrates, or 
it helps define whatever it is that we're referring to. So it has an object and its object is usually directly to the left of it and it helps to modify whatever that object is. Now answer choice C, answer choice C here, the word of signals I'm starting a preposition. Now D, this is an adverb and we can just get rid of that right away because it doesn't make any sense. And like I said, some of these answers just won't make any sense. So this isn't even part of the discussion. What we're really trying to do here is figure out what the difference between subordinating conjunctions and prepositions are and why we'd, we would use one over the other. So when I'm reading this sentence, and if you recall when question eight uh, actually combines these two fragments together, the habit of pulling water into its trunk, the answer was uh, I think G and then, so I put an and here, right, and get rid of that the habit of pulling water to its trunk and then releasing that water into its mouth develops only after months of witnessing other elephants doing so. So what I would be doing here is modifying the amount of time that it takes, right? Months of witnessing. So it takes months and this is what I'm doing during that period of time. We're witnessing other elephants doing so. So I would be modifying the phrase beforehand. In other words, I'd be modifying this whole sentence. I would not be starting a brand new thought. And that's the important thing we want to recognize. Are we starting a new thought here where the author is trying to now connect two ideas together by, by separating these ideas? Or are we just adding to the current idea? Well, we would be adding to the current idea. We're not expressing a new idea where we're now we're witnessing elephants and it's not completely connected to the, um, the water that um, it was releasing into its mouth over the period of months. It's not a brand new idea. We're just adding to this idea. We're modifying it. We're letting them know that months of witnessing other elephants doing so. So this really is a question of starting a new thought versus modifying an original thought. And we use prepositional phrases to modify original thoughts. And we use subordinating conjunctions to start new thoughts. Even though the thought is um, an incomplete thought, it's a dependent clause, it can't stand alone, it requires an independent clause, it's still a new thought. And if you want to learn more about subordinating conjunctions or prepositional phrases, we have videos and materials that go over both of these, including lists of words that you can review to help signal what is a preposition and what is a subordinating conjunction. But for most of us, we don't need to know this information. We could just use our concision and subvocalization technique because questions like this rarely come up and usually they can easily be answered because they will sound smooth as opposed to jarring. Thank you.